lovely humans and welcome back to my channel. If you are watching this on Wedding Chicks or over on Facebook, thank you so much for stopping by. A few months back, I made a video about 12 things that your guests don't give a flying fart in space about. And little did I know it would become the most viewed video on my channel, which is just insane to me. But it goes to show me that you guys care about what your guests want. And so, with that in mind, I decided to come up with a list of items that your guests actually gaff about. Give a... You know what about. So without further ado, nine things your guests actually care about. Number one, the date, the time, and the location. If you want to maximize guest attendance, make sure that you pick a good date, a good time, and a good location. And here's what I mean by that. The date matters because if you put it near a major holiday, most of the time, people will be taking vacations or going to see family members, and it's not necessarily a convenient time for them to go to a wedding. So you may lose quite a few members of your guest list if you put it at a weird date. The time matters as well. You need to give the girls proper time to primp, and you need to give the guests who are non-night owls a little bit of reprieve. So while a midnight ceremony sounds really, really dreamy, it's just that. It's dreamy. It's people want to be in their pajamas. And for the location, make sure it's something that is easily accessible for most, if not all, of your guests. With that in mind, if you do 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 do. If you do have a destination wedding, make sure it's a destination that people actually want to go to. Number two, the weather. An outdoor ceremony in January is pretty hard to pull off unless you live in the southwestern United States or on a tropical island. On the other hand, having an outdoor ceremony and reception in the height of summer can be really, really tough for people's bodies. Again, unless you're in a cooler climate, and then it's not as bad. If your guests are freezing their knickers off or sweating through their suit jacket, they are miserable. Also, quick side note, if you are having an outdoor ceremony and or reception, and it's gonna be below 65 degrees, you have to get heaters. You can't expect your guests to show up in a parka and bring their own heating blanket to make sure that they're gonna be comfortable enough to stay long enough to enjoy your event. Number three, parking. Parking should be close, accessible, and free or low cost. Trudging a quarter mile in stilettos is difficult for even the most proficient high-heeled walker. So um, if you're like me and you only wear high heels when you absolutely have to, walking about 100 feet is difficult. And no one ever wants to pay $20 for parking. Like, ever. Not even at a Beyonce concert. Number four, the timeliness. If you start your event late, it will bore your guests to tears. They'll start to get antsy and it will set the tone for the rest of your event. Recently, I actually had a mother of the bride ask me how I could tell if a crowd was getting antsy, and so I gave her this explanation. If they look like they are engaged in conversation and the background music is slightly lively but not too loud, they're pretty much enjoying themselves. But if they start looking around, like they're waiting for Ashton Kutcher to come out and tell them that they're being punked, you know it's time to get the ball rolling because they're anxious. Number five, the entertainment. This is where a fantastic DJ comes into play. I've said this before, I'll say it again. DJs are the unsung heroes of wedding days. Like, I don't care what you say. A good DJ is worth every single penny. They can read the room, gauge the vibes, and adjust the music accordingly. If your guests are all acting like bona fide wallflowers, um, that's a problem. But if they're out on the dance floor shaking what their mama gave them, you know the DJ is doing something right. This is also a great reason to have a photo booth, Mad Libs, lawn games, or an interactive food display. Number six, speaking of food, serve good food. A surprising amount of guests will skip lunch because A, they're either running late, or B, they're waiting to gorge themselves on your wedding day feast. So be prepared for them to descend upon your wedding meal like a pack of rabid wolves. Also, don't skip the appetizers. That is way too long for people to go without food. Hangry guests are not happy guests. Number seven, the booze. Now, you do not need to have all top shelf liquors to serve at your wedding day. You don't need them. Guests don't necessarily care about that. What they do care about is having something to drink because they're shaking what their mama gave them because your DJ is so good. Beer and wine will totally suffice. Just make sure you have enough to get you throughout the entire evening. And if you are having an alcohol-free event, which many people do, make sure you actually have interesting beverages to drink. Lavender lemonade, a good mocktail, or an Arnold Palmer are far more entertaining than just water. Also, while we're on the subject of booze, 
cash bars are a big downer, just from the guest experience. If you can't afford to have a full open bar, look, I get it, we couldn't do that either, and so we chose to only serve beer and wine. Also, that's all our venue would allow, but that's neither here nor there. Cut down on your alcohol options until you reach a point that you can afford to supply beverages for your guests for the entire evening. Number eight, the flow. Now this kind of goes hand in hand with like the timeliness of your event, um, but it deserves its own bullet point, and here's why. Guests will notice if cocktail hour takes two and a half hours. Guests will notice if it takes three hours to get food in front of them. Guests will notice if they can hear crickets chirping in the background. They will notice all of those things because they are bored and there's nothing to entertain them. So making sure that your event stays on time and flows properly is super important because then they won't notice those things. That's where a good coordinator and a good DJ come in hand because they're able to read the room, gauge the vibes, and adjust your timeline accordingly to make sure no one notices anything. And lastly, number nine, the connection. Your guests show up to your wedding day because they want to be a part of your event. And that is the sweetest gift that they can give you. The best gift that you can give them in return is the gift of connection. What I recommend if there is time in the timeline or throughout the event to stop by each table and say hi, take a quick pick and do some glad handing, then perfect. Take that opportunity, shake some hands, kiss some babies. Trust me, they will be thrilled that you took a small portion of time out of your wedding day to say hi to them. At the end of the day, it's your wedding day. You shouldn't let anyone else's opinions, mine included, sway you from making decisions that you want to make. But if you're spending all of this money to make sure your guests have a good time, you want them to stay for the entire time. And basically the nuts and bolts of it is you need to feed them well and you need to entertain them. Like, it's just that simple. Make sure they don't get bored. Make sure they don't go hungry. Make sure they've got plenty of booze to resort to if they need to, hopefully not too much. It's also why you need a good bartender to cut somebody off, just in case somebody get cranked. But if you want your guests to enjoy themselves, make sure you follow all these rules, or at least some of them, or all of them. So that's all we have for today, folks. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you haven't done so already, like this video, because you liked this video. See what I did there? <laughs> and subscribe to this channel for more tips and tricks for the modern day bride. Speaking of subscribing, Holy smokes, you guys, we are so close to a thousand subscribers. And by we, I mean me. I mean it like the royal we. Who? I am out of my noodle, overwhelmed, and so blessed that you guys have decided to allow me into your wedding planning process. Like, that's huge. That means a lot to me. So thank you to all of my subscribers for already clicking that button, hitting that bell notification, and if you haven't done so already, jump on down there and do that. I'd love to have you be a part of our community. Speaking of community, drop a comment down below. I get very excited by comments. I love interacting with you guys. I love hearing your ideas. They give me ideas for new content, which is sometimes really, really hard to come up with. As always, a huge shout out to my gal pals over at Wedding Chicks for hosting this video. And until next week, bye guys.